Okay. Okay, let's begin. Welcome to today's webinar, Forest Data and Free and Open Source Solutions for Climate Action. Thanks again to all of you for joining us already. It's great to see you here. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the importance of national forest monitoring systems to support climate action. We're going to share knowledge and experience from Ghana and Papua New Guinea and launch FAO's latest free open source tool to support forest monitoring. Today's session will be in English and we will have four presentations followed by a 15 minute question and answer session where we want to hear from you. And in total, the session will last for one hour and 20 minutes. So just a quick word on the format of this Zoom. Your microphones are muted to minimize audio problems as we have quite a lot of participants, which is great. Um, the session is, however, all about interacting with you. So we want to give you the opportunity to ask questions to the experts that you've been, that you may, whose work you may be aware of and take this rare opportunity and don't hesitate to put your questions in the question and answer box to each of our speakers as you listen to their presentations. And if somebody has already posed a question that, or that interests you, you can also give it a virtual thumbs, back, thumbs up in the, in the question and answer box. You will have noticed already maybe that there is both a question and answer box and a chat. So just to repeat the question and answer box is we want to keep that for the the questions to our present presenters, our colleagues will be helping us, helping me select the most appropriate questions from there um, and to make, make sure that it's easier for us to find and respond to all the questions. Um, please keep them in the question and answer box and to reserve instead the chat box for if you have any technical problems, general comments or just want to say hello. So um, just to remember when you're writing in the chat box to to uh, address the question to everybody and not just the panelists so that everybody can see, so the audience as well. And in the question and answer box, if you address your questions to the specific presenter, that would also really help us in responding. Uh, this webinar will be recorded just to let you know, and we will share the recording with you afterwards. So let me quickly introduce myself. Um, I'm Emily Donegan, and I work for the National Forest Monitoring Team at the FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. Um, so yeah, I see some of you have already done it, but please introduce yourselves as well in the chat. It's great to see who's here with us. And without further ado, I'd also like to introduce you to our first speaker, Fabio Picinich. He works at the FAO eLearning Academy. Fabio helps manage and coordinate the delivery of the Academy's extensive portfolio of e-learning courses blended learning programs for the benefit of FAO member countries. So thanks for being with us today, Fabio, over to you. Thank you, thank you so much, Emily, for this introduction. Uh, so good afternoon, good morning, and good evening to everyone. Uh, I would like to greet you all uh, and welcome to this session on forest data and free open source solution for climate action on behalf of Christina Petraki, who is the leader of the FAO Learning Academy. Um, this webinar, as you, as many of you already know, belongs to the joint series that we organized together with the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and um, with Future Food Institute and the French Training and Research Alliance for Agriculture, Food, Environment and Global Health, Agrinium, which is here with us today. Uh, as, you, as you know already, the idea of our joint webinars, as many of you uh, participated also in other sessions is to promote the thematic areas covered in our multilingual e-learning courses uh, that we always make available to everyone in our website and that are available completely free of charge as a global public good. Uh, so I would like to invite you after this session perhaps to have a look at the offering of the FAO Learning Academy. Uh, you will find several e-learning courses related to the topic that we are presenting today. And I will come back to that later on uh, during the Q&A after the presentations, I will provide you with a series of link of the learning courses that are uh, related to today's topic. Just uh, keep in mind that although this webinar does not foresee a certificate of participation, you can obtain a digital badge uh, taking one of the related e-learning courses and passing the evaluation with a score of 75% or higher. So once again, uh, the list of all the forestry courses will be shared with you very soon. Uh, for the time being, I just would like to wish you all an excellent webinar and uh, Emily, over to you. Thank you. 
Thanks a lot, Fabio. Yeah, fantastic. Everyone, go ahead and check out the extensive offer of courses available on FAO's eLearning Academy. Fabio is going to share those links in a bit, and you can also browse through the offering on the link that's that's on your screen right now as well. So next, we have a presentation from Rocio Condor. Rocio is leading the global project called Building Global Capacity to Increase Transparency in the Forest Sector, or CBIT Forest, uh, implemented by the FAO and financed by the CBIT Trust Fund of the Global Environment Facility, which was established 30 years ago on the eve of the Rio Earth Summit to tackle our planet's most pressing environmental problems. Rocio is coordinating activities to make forest data more transparent, accessible and available, and helping developing countries meet the Paris Agreement's Enhanced Transparency Framework, the ETF, in collaboration with key stakeholders. She is coordinating activities to make forest data more transparent. So over to you, Rocio. Thank you, Emily. Um, and let me start uh, by sharing with you all three key messages uh, to introduce this webinar link to the implementation of the CBIT Forest Project. Building capacity and improving access to information and data are the two key areas the project focuses on in order to enhance transparency of climate change reporting. A robust national forest monitoring system requires good data. And good data means greater transparency. Free open source solutions enables countries to build more comprehensive, reliable monitoring systems that will help them track forest cover, land use, and climate mitigation activities. Knowledge sharing activities, new data sharing and data analysis and visualization platform, new data sets made available and capacities built in targeted countries on data management. These are some ways the project has worked to improve access and transparency of forest data. The project represents an adaptive and flexible response to the challenge posed by COVID-19. It swiftly moved to fully virtual implementation, swapping in countries workshop for e-learning courses and webinars. In the next slides, let me share the latest updates from the CBIT Forest Project, a two-year global project to set up developing countries' ability to collect, analyze, and disseminate forest-related data to make forest data transparent and accessible in line with enhanced transparency framework under the Paris Agreement. It aims to increase institutional and technical capacities and to boost knowledge sharing and awareness raising about the ETF, particularly in the forest sector organizing sub-regional and national virtual webinars to build capacities and enhance their national forest monitoring systems started in 26 countries, as well as 187 countries and territories included as part of the global network of national correspondents for the Global Forest Resources Assessment, FRA. How? Upgraded FAO Global Forest Resource Assessment FRA 2020 Reporting and Dissemination Platform to make forest data open and accessible to all. New functionalities are now available since its launch in July last year and is available in six UN languages. A tool developed to facilitate the assessment of gaps and needs in countries' national forest monitoring systems including an information note for policymakers and a quick guidance for practitioners. All is available in multiple languages. Outreach and sharing of case studies and best practice on transparency in the forest sector. Last year, case studies from Costa Rica, the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Bangladesh were launched. Let me share new cases in the next few slides. Knowledge and training material developed also, including self-paced e-learning courses on forest and transparency available already in English, Spanish, French, and Chinese, and soon in Arabic and Russian. And three editions of the massive open online courses 
held simultaneously in English, French, and Spanish to enable access to knowledge about the enhanced transparency framework and forests. Check our work in the one year in numbers brochure, which contains all activities and products of the project. The number of direct individuals who have benefited from pilot country work activities, regional networks, webinars, e-learning, and massive open online course was around 7,000 from around 120 countries. Overall, of those participating in the project activities, 39% were women. Let me first share some updates after, after our last webinar on forest data for climate action, the importance of legal and institutional frameworks, where we launched the paper on institutionalization of forest data. Now, the paper is also available in Spanish and French. And of course, you can consult the brief we have prepared that can assist countries in assessing and identifying relevant aspects that might be included in a national forest monitoring system legal instrument, also available in multiple languages. But today, I'm really happy to share with you our new set of case studies on forest and transparency in multiple languages, coming from Chile, Ghana, and Papua New Guinea. These case studies can serve as guides for other countries just beginning to implement a national forest monitoring system, or also for those that want to improve and learn more. And it's my pleasure to have with us representative from Ghana and Papua New Guinea sharing their knowledge and experience today. Thanks all for your attention, and I encourage you to follow us and learn about our activities by consulting the web page of the project or our Trilo board. Help us and contribute with this global effort by sharing information with your colleagues and networks. Back to you, Emily. Thanks so much, Rocio. Um, yeah, to everyone listening in, take a look at those case studies that Rocio has just mentioned. Go on the CBIT Forest website and take take advantage of all the great material that's been generated and is there for you to use. Um, if you have any questions for Rocio or for any of our speakers, start putting them into the Q and answer, question and answer box, the Q and A box, and it will also help if you write the name of who you want to address the question to, just as a reminder. So, as Rocio just mentioned, today we're going to hear from representatives from both Ghana and Papua New Guinea on their experience working on national forest monitoring in their countries. So, first off, we hear from Thomas Jambra, who is the manager for measuring, reporting, and verification and Red Plus programs at the Climate Change Directorate of the Forestry Commission of Ghana. Thomas also coordinates efforts towards the full operationalization of Ghana's national forest monitoring system. Thomas, it's great to have you here with us again today. Please, over to you. Thank you, Emily. It's also great um, to share Ghana's experience as always. And I want to thank um, FAO for giving uh, Ghana this platform to share our experience um, with the whole world as well. I can see more than 200 participants online and it, it's, it's really great to have everyone. So thank you very much. And um, basically, want to talk about Estabos, uh, National Forest Monitoring System for monitoring land use capacities in Ghana. Um, this will, is, is going to be a very short presentation. It gives a highlight of whatever is going on in Ghana. I believe as um, Rachel presented, um, can find some details in the online um, link that she presented. And subsequently, if there are questions even beyond this particular platform, we are always open and we are always ready to answer them. Thank you. So um, one key thing is that globally, all countries are moving or have made substantial advancement, uh, which are geared towards developing and operationalizing their national forest monitoring system, uh, primarily to uh, um, um, comply with the measuring and um, reporting and verification framework set out by the UNFCCC. And um, more so recently under the Paris agree Agreement, we have the Enhanced Transparency Framework. So 
efforts nationally and globally are towards enhancing national forest monetary system frameworks so that we can report transparently and more accurately as we, we go forward. Um, Ghana is no exception in this direction. Um, what um, the steps that Ghana have taken is that Ghana, first of all, we've developed what we call a, a, a national forest monitoring system framework document, which is a blueprint for the development of Ghana's national forest monitoring system. You see that in that framework, we have three main components. Um, and the components are one, um, the greenhouse gas inventory for red plus accounting. Um, two, we have environmental and social safeguards. It, once ever, whatever we are doing needs to happen in a right and safe environment. And that's why we have the safeguards um, component as well, so that we can monitor all of this at the same time. And also we have the registry so that any emission reduction so-called um, would be accounted for on that particular platform as well. So that's how Ghana um, sees this um, happening. Um, so far, we've made lots of progress. Um, we've, we have um, developed a, stand, a standard operating manuals, 12 of them, that gives guidance as to how some of these things, the data is reported or data is co collected. Um, the next slide, I'll give a, a pictorial view of how what Ghana is looking at in all of this. When you see, as I indicated, component one of the National Forest Monitoring System, you are looking at the greenhouse gas emissions. We have the component two, looking at um, the social and environmental safeguards, and we have the registry system. So the component one is mainly made of the National Forest Inventory Systems that we have in country. Um, the forest areas, the changes, the land use and land use changes, the forest carbon stocks. So basically that's the component one that Ghana is working on at the moment. The component two, we have the social and environmental safeguards, given the framework within which any activity that is being undertaken here, um, would, within which that would work as well. And having done that, we are looking at um, a registry system, checking the emission reductions that Ghana is looking at. All of these we envisage will be put on a web portal, a web portal so that we have a transparent data enough and everyone who wants to check based on the data access can have information as and when, and we have a reporting format also as well so that we can be generating reports as and when needed periodically. If it's quarterly, we have such reports on. If it's monthly, if it is yearly as well, we have all such reports on. And any data through uh, that comes from Ghana will be routed through this particular system that Ghana is developing at the moment. Now, the objective of this particular system is mainly, uh, of the NFMA is mainly to serve as the main source for the land use sector in Ghana, so that um, we don't have so many report sitting in people's decks or people in other institutions. And this will be the main source of report and the main source of um, that anyone in Ghana, outside Ghana, that would get this, uh, want anything of Ghana in the land sector will get this report from. And Ghana is implementing the Red Plus mechanism. And this uh, platform is expected to provide information on Ghana's Red Plus mechanism and also all related activities to the public. We want to be as transparent as possible. We may be reporting that um, we are doing A, B, C, D, we've achieved Z, X, Y, Z. Are these verifiable? Are these happening in, in a framework that is um, sustainable? Are, are we ensuring environmental integrity? All these need to be reported and these to be showcased to the public as well so that they can question how we are going about all of this. Uh, that will be enhancing our transparency to enhance the, the, our, the transparent way within which we do all of this. And the reports as and when appropriate, as and when needed by the public and the system is, would come up with needs, um, access needs so that as and when you need any information, you, we, the system provides that information as well for the user. Now, 
we have this is not um, a, just a, a one. So I, I indicated earlier that the, or the objective is to look at um, having a data system for the land sector of Ghana. So this is not just a, um, a key thing just for the Forestry Commission of Ghana, it's just for the key stakeholders who are involved in all of these, the forex, uh, the forest um, sector or subsector of Ghana's economy. When you look at, we have at, at the policy level, we have a ministry. So the ministry will be looking at um, how the policy level related to the national forest monitoring system. We have the, um, the forestry commission itself where I am. We'll be looking at the technical side of it. We have the resource management support center, the uh, information technology department, all of the forestry commission. So they will be providing the overall technical support for this particular exercise. We have other institutions that would support. So any support to the country, be it from the FAO, which we've received um, previously from the uh, Forest Carbon Partnership Facility, which we've received as well, is routed through this system so that no system comes in out of the country to produce a parallel system. We have one system and if there are weaknesses in there, it's evaluated and all support is routed through that particular mm -hmm. system. Overall, there needs to be a one body that is coordinating all of this. And uh, we have in Ghana, the National Red Plus Secretariat um, that is coordinating all of the Ghana, of Ghana's uh, National Forest Monitoring System. Um, I'll move to um, some success factors that um, we have uh, produced out of this. Um, one key thing is that um, the integration and of consistency with existing sources of information. Um, um, we've conducted a national review of all uh, functionalities of any um, semblance of national forestry system existing in various institutions. And we are trying to integrate all of them so that we can respond to the various needs of all the stakeholders, be it the private sector, the CSOs, and whatever whatever they have on national forest forest monitoring system. We've conducted um, a review of such a system, and through this process also as well, um, Ghana has been able to generate reports. We have um, our 2017 forest reference level, for instance, generated out of this particular system. And we have a 2021 updated report, which is currently undergoing a technical assessment system with the UNF triple C. And um, one key thing is that through this particular process, we have um, a, a team consisting of people from various um, um, sectors in the forest, um, um, various institutions in the forest sector. We have people from academia who we provide who provide technical stopping backstopping from their end we have people from the, re the research institutes who will be also giving guidance on the research just that they've done we realize that in most of our publications we refer to some papers that are published in country as well these are coming from the people within the group that we have put together we have people from the cso's and who provide um, understanding from their end as well we have community people who provide um, guidance as to and then local knowledge that you can bring in as well. So we see some of these things as some of the key success factors that Ghana has put together to ensure that we have a robust and more transparent um, forest, um, national forest monitoring system. Having said this, it, it's not all rosy. There are, there are some key challenges that Ghana we are experiencing at the moment. Um, the, the key one is um, the lack of sustainable and predictable funding for Red Plus investment. Um, you know, most of these things uh, fund, uh, requires lots of funding. So um, it, it, it's quite challenging um, in country as well if um, the fund is not sustainable. They are mainly, uh, the, the funding have mainly come from um, um, donor dependent and that that has been a challenge for us in country as well the key thing is that at least we have a framework document that guides the process so any donor support that comes in goes into that uh, implementing that particular framework that we have that has been the flip side to this otherwise this is um 
mainly largely donor dependent, and that's a challenge um, for us. And um, we need more institutional support and capacity building for data processing and analysis. You realize that in my previous slide, I shared something with that we've had support from FAO, for instance, um, that have supported, given technical support in the, in the past or currently giving technical support for us in some aspect of the National Forest Monitoring System. And we need um, to undertake some capacity needs and see where we can strengthen or we can strengthen some of these support that's to come. So, we lack some capacity somewhere, but all in all, um, the, that's the key, uh, another key challenge, the funding and also the lack of technical support in some areas that um, we have at the moment. Now, going forward, um, in running up, going forward, there are some key things that I want to um, bring in, 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 in view. One is, um, I indicated that we have institutional representations and all that. We need to extend that. Uh, we've realized that it's not as exhaustive. We need to bring in more people so that we have um, more institutions represented so that the information that will be produced on the National Forest Monetary System web portal will, will be uh, more robust than we have currently. And that's what we, are, we, we seek to do. Um, currently in country, we have um, the, the greenhouse gas inventory reports that is produced generally. We have some, there are MOUs with various institutions. That's what we intend to um, promote. We have more MOUs with various institutions so that it's not like an individual thing that is being undertaken. There will be institutional ownership for whatever Ghana is particular, we are doing at the moment. And what, when individual leaves, leave the institutions, the, um, there will be others who will be representing them as well. So that's what we intend doing at the moment. The other key thing is that we are undertaking a more a technical and capacity needs assessment so that any support that comes in will not be generic, but it will be targeted and um, we would have undertaken the needs and where the support must go. And uh, we can make case for that going forward. So um, these are the key things that Ghana is doing at the moment. And um, thank you very much um, for that. Um, I would like to run up by reading my conclusion that Ghana is putting in place the necessary protocols to provide a more transparent, a robust and comprehensive national forest monitoring system which will offer multiple stakeholders benefits according to their own specific needs. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you so much, Thomas, for sharing your experience there and developing the National Forest Monitoring System and also the challenges that you faced. That was really interesting. Um, I particularly like the slide where you showed the three three different components and then also the web, the fourth component, component of the web portal um, that cuts across, is cross-cutting across all the other three um, components and is a real vehicle for transparency. So that was really great to see. And it, I think it relates as well to our next um, presentation, which is about software tools that are helping to make the process of forest monitoring more accurate and efficient. Our next presenter is Lowry Beza, who excitingly is here to release a brand new software tool called Arena. Arena is the latest edition to FAO's Open Forest Software Suite, which is designed for forest and land monitoring. So, Lowry, thanks for being here with us. Over to you to tell us more. Thank you, Emily. Okay, you see my screen. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So good morning, good afternoon and evening everyone. And welcome to the uh, follow this, uh, hear about new open forest tools. Uh, open forest is an FAO led initiative to develop and share free open source solutions for environmental monitoring. The open forest tools are used in forest assessments and in land monitoring surveys globally. And they have got a wide user community during the past decade. Today, our Open Forest team is proud to launch a new ARENA platform created with the financial support by the UN Red program and technical experts working at the uh, 
uh, forestry division. So let's take a look. What do we offer for open forest tools at this time? So what is ARENA? ARENA is a new open forest application that offers methods and tools for storing, managing and processing survey data, such as field inventory data. It works in a secure cloud server and it combines the main features of two existing open forest tools, open forest collect and calc. And the main advantages of ARENA, they are as follows. So this is a platform in the cloud that enables easy access to more flexible data management, utilization and processing. Particularly, this system enables collaboration and data sharing in a working group. As uh, working in a cloud, uh, based application, there is no worries about the maintenance because all the updates are instantly available for all users. Similarly, there are no need for doing per user installations in, in the local machines. So uh, next, a few words about the application areas. Uh, Arena offers methods and tools for collecting, hosting, and archiving of various types of uh, data uh, and processing. For example, it can host forest monitoring data, particular data collected in multi-cycle forest inventories, such as in uh, the national forest inventories. It can also uh, host and pro process uh, botanical survey data or socioeconomic data, just as uh, qu uh, collected with the help of questionnaires and uh, other survey data, for example, collected in agricultural studies. For data processing, for example, when computing of forest biomass or, and carbon stock estimates, ARENA offers an integrated RStudio server for the programmers. So the data processing can be handled with the help of uh, R, R language script. The current status of ARENA version 1.0 is that this is a starting point for the new generation of online tools. It offers a technical platform which will be soon expanded. The core part of the system is the database management system that enables extension of applications to be built around and on the top of it. Because the, uh, this presentation will give just a quick snapshot how ARENA works, we will later on this year organize online training events. And we will also prepare uh, video tutorials to show how to use the platform. Next, I want to tell you uh, what are the features in the pipeline. These are particularly templates for data processing, inbuilt methods for data aggregation and reporting and the data dashboards, and functions and connections, uh, functions for geospatial analysis and connections uh, with data exchange to SIPL platform tools. In addition, we have in, in the uh, planning stage a co collect mob, new collect mobile application that will be uh, utilizing ARENA technology. So let's take a look what ARENA, how it looks in the action. Open Forest Arena is a new cloud platform for flexible data management, utilization, and processing. Here we show the main features of ARENA. The user first has to log into the system. ARENA offers a dashboard for managing your surveys. A survey is a schema in ARENA's database management system. The survey can contain several properties, such as name, label, survey languages, spatial reference system for map data, and inventory cycle. The left side panel contains all the available tools. Let's first take a look at the form designer. The form designer is the main tool for building a new survey. It offers simple methods for adding new pages, entities, and attributes for data entry. A survey can contain multiple subpages in order to separate the survey into logical elements. The input elements can be located easily in the form and resized as needed. Forms can also contain tables as shown here. Let's first reorganize the item on this form. Each data attribute contains multiple properties. Here we see some advanced features such as the required checkbox. 
And then in the validation section, Arena opens the screen with an expression editor. The expression editor is an easy to use tool to add and modify logical rules that are needed to carry out data checks in order to guarantee better quality data. Okay, let's jump back and quickly reorganize the items in this page. And we go to preview the survey. And in the preview mode, we can test the data entry forms. For example, we can test that values can be correctly inputted and that all validation rules work as expected. Once all the issues in the survey are fixed and the survey is ready to be used, it needs to be published. This process requires running several steps in order to guarantee the correctness and consistency of the data entered to the survey. Here I will cancel the process and jump forwards. Let's take a look at survey hierarchy. In this section, we can view a tree diagram that displays the hierarchical structure of the data. The diagram can also be expanded and we see all entities and data attributes that are stored in the database. Next, the categories view offers tools for management of categorical information. Categories are coded lists that can be used with coded variables, such as land use or administrative units. The taxonomies view is for adding species lists into Arena. Here we have a list of bamboo species in this survey. The list can be imported and exported from external files. Okay, let's next see how the data entry view looks in Arena. Here we have a list of all inputted records and we open one. Arena opens up the last published survey. Here we can view and edit the data. And for example, in this forest inventory data, we can find sample plot data of the selected cluster. This data is now locked, but can be opened and edited again as needed. So let's move back and see the next feature, Data Explorer. Data Explorer is a query tool for viewing the data in tabular format. Here we can view both inputted data and computed result variables. Let's see how this tool works. We can filter the data by various types and pick up and add attributes to the table. So we can scroll and browse through the data. The data can be viewed in multiple ways. It can be easily filtered. So let's make a logical rule and show only the trees with diameter greater or equal to 30 centimeters in the data explorer. Here they are. Next, we sort this data by ascending order. And browse through the records. However, let's take off the rule by resetting the filtering rule. So the Data Explorer is a handy tool to view the selected subset of the data. But when all data are needed, it can, they can be exported and then downloaded by a user who has the right to do so. Here we have a tool to generate a validation report to get a list of erroneous data. And the data processing part is under chains. In this view, we control the calculation chains in the survey and we open a chain and go to the view, the ready-made calculation scripts for trees. Now I add a numeric result variable for trees and add a new variable to compute the blue ground biomass of a tree. First, it needs a name, label, and other properties. The calculation scripts can be viewed here and the variable can be set inactive or back to active. For doing the final editing of the scripts, they all need to be processed in RStudio. First, the survey needs to be published again and then we start our studio by clicking this button. This takes a moment. And we copy these commands, then click OK, and we get access to our studio. Our studio is used to finalize the data processing scripts, test, and run them. So as we can see, this requires some expert knowledge, but the scripts need to be written probably only once for a survey. However, to make this easier, FAO experts are working to add templates with common scripts into this platform. The user management is the final feature to show. 
It is a tool for administrators to manage the users. The content of this view depends on the user's access role. Okay, that's the story very quickly done. And uh, how to get access to this platform? So it depends on your role that uh, how do you uh, position yourself? So if you are familiar with uh, some knowledge of uh, database design, you can become a survey designer and uh, you need to uh, fill in the form that is available on this address www.openforestarena.org. There you can send an email to us and we can add your name to the, to the list of survey administrators so that you can start uh, creating your own surveys or using templates. Uh, secondly, that uh, if you are the end users of existing surveys or uh, start entering data, you need to request an access uh, to the particular survey from your local survey administrator. Uh, this person can invite you into Open Forest Arena. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, you, uh, you are welcome to visit our website at uh, openforest.org. So over to you, Emily. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Lowry. Very exciting to have a new tool added to the very successful suite of software that Open Forest already is. To those who are listening, don't hesitate, as, as Larry just said, to check out those tools on the openforest.org website. They're available there, free and open source. Um, so get inspired for the different analyses and data visualizations that you can do on there for forest and wider land monitoring. Um, just a quick reminder before we move on to the next uh, presentation, to if you want to address any questions to our speakers, uh, so Lowry, Thomas, Rocio, or up next is Elizabeth. Um, just please put them in the question and answer box so that we can we can find and respond to them more easily. That would be great. So next we hear from another country that has used open forests extensively in its national forest monitoring activities, and that is Papua New Guinea. Today here with us we have Elizabeth Kaidom who is the Acting Climate Change Officer with the Red Plus and Climate Change Branch under the Resource Planning and Development Directorate of the Papua New Guinea Forest Authority. She was involved in the first multi-purpose national forest inventory for the country and has also been involved in using the open forest tools since inception in Papua New Guinea in updating forests and land use information. Elizabeth, thanks so much for being here with us today. Over to you. Okay, um, thanks Emily and good morning, um, good afternoon and um, probably good evening to the others as well. Um, thank you to FAO for giving us the opportunity to um, present on uh, Papua New Guinea's experience with using the um, uh, open forest uh, tools. Okay, um, this presentation is just a short presentation of um, what uh, PNG was able to use in terms of the um, tools that were developed by FAO. So this is basically a background. Um, we have two systems. One is the Collected and the Terra PNG. So um, for the for PNG Forest Authority, we used the Collected um, uh, system. And our colleagues from the Climate Change Development Authority uses the Terra PNG. So you will notice that um, since the open forest um, tools were made available, um, PNG started using this way back in 2013, uh, which we were able to determine the different land use and forest types that we have. So as the years um, went on, the tools, uh, the collector was uh, improved and uh, we were fortunate to be part of the improvement of the tool itself. So based on the, um, the improvements, we were able to do some of the assessments like the, um, the forest and land use assessment, uh, which you will see we have uh, published a, uh, we did a assessment for 15 year period from 2000 to 2015. So this was only, uh, launched in 2019. 
Uh, currently, we are updating that information from 2016 to 2019. So part of this updating of this uh, information is to uh, update our forest reference level, the biennial update report, and the national determined contribution, as well as uh, we did uh, submit a Red Plus uh, technical annex in our um, the last uh, submission of the um, NDC. As well as part of the um, part of this work, we were able to um, develop the national Red Plus strategy. So you will see at the bottom of the screen where we have this. It's a ten year. Um, covers a 10 year uh, period from 2017 to 2027. So within the period, it highlights some activities that we're supposed to do uh, for the, um, under the Red Plus strategy. Um, as well, um, as I mentioned, we're currently updating the information. So based on the updates, we're able to, uh, going to submit another, a second frail, um, the BUR, as well as the um, NDC and the uh, BTR as well. So that's just a brief background of um, in terms of using the open forest tool. So um, much of this work that we've been doing has been just basically using collected. So collected has been the foundation in terms of uh, uh, especially the updating of the forest and land use information here in PNG. Okay, um, like uh, the colleague in Ghana mentioned about the National Forest Monitoring System. So for as part of the our National uh, Forest Inventory, we use the uh, collect that to stratify the, um, the type, I mean, the different forest get, uh, strata that we have. So we had a double uh, sampling approach where we have the use of the remote sensing and the collect earth, and then doing the random noise uh, selection of the plot itself or the forest plots. So basically you can see that we have the, um, the NFI cluster design. So basically we have about four uh, plots within a cluster so in uh, various, uh, about 300 meters apart, a different um, direction. And then the plot design itself, we have about the uh, measurement of different variables at uh, various radius. And uh, we also developed the field manual. So we were looking at the upper plants, that's basically the trees, the lower plants, and then we captured information on the uh, birds and the insects, and also looking at the soil information. So you can see there's some of uh, my colleagues out in the field uh, collecting or uh, doing some assessments. So we have the uh, someone doing the, uh, the measuring of the tree diameter, and then we also do the, um, the collection of the lower plants by collecting samples within a given radius, and then the collection of the insects and recording of the birds and so. So, so far in our current uh, progress in, in this work, um, for this work, we, we set to do about a thousand clusters, which is basically around four, 4,000 plots. Um, at the moment, we only have done uh, 42 clusters. It's roughly around 166 uh, plots. So we still have a really long way to go, but uh, we hope to complete this as this, is, this would be our first uh, national forest inventory, multi-purpose national forest inventory, apart from the, uh, uh, apart from the inventories that we do for our logging operations. Okay. Um, this one here is, uh, as I stated about the open forest uh, tools. Uh, so far, we initially, when we got into using the tools, we were mostly exposed on the collect earth. And then gradually we were uh, exposed to using the collect, collect mobile, calc. And just recently we started using the um, collect earth online as part of the mangrove assessment. 
So in the next couple of slides, I'll be just touching basically on the Collect Earth in terms of how it's been uh, useful in terms of uh, doing the forest monitoring and then assessing the changes within the forest and the land use. Okay, this is just an example of uh, using the Collect Earth. So um, you can actually customize the Collect Earth depending on your country circumstances. So for our case, because we have about 13 uh, forest types, so we have about 12 that is in the natural forest, and then we cover the forest plantation. So in this example here is basically showing um, uh, in a natural uh, environment of one of the forest types that we have. So this one is basically looking at the logging um, activity that's, that's uh, happening in this particular uh, plot here. So basically the idea of using this is to actually detect when the actual disturbance uh, occurs in this plot here. So you will have like, we're using um, the Google Earth Engine, which has the uh, Landsat 7 and 8. And then just recently you have the Sentinel, which shows the current um, status of the forest or the land use in general. So, um, so we can see that in 2000, you still have the forest that's still intact. And then the, the, the detection of logging roads was detected in 2012. So from this, we are able to determine the, the type or when the disturbance actually occurred in that uh, forest area. So this is also useful because this will also help us to determine if the operation is actually within the confined or permitted uh, boundary or concession where the operation is um, occurring. If it is outside, then we can inform our colleagues on the on the project sites that are monitoring these project areas to ask them to check. So this is one way to ensure that uh, whatever is, uh, what the logging operation is happening out there is within the permitted boundaries of the concession area. Okay, uh, this is for the land use monitoring. So this example is basically showing how you can actually determine from a forest land converted to a cropland. So you have here, as previously, you had the, um, the Landsat images of Landsat 7 and 8, and then Sentinel. So as shown previously, we have the intact forest. So way back in 2000, it's still a forest. And then we detected a full conversion from forest to cropland in 2012. So this also helps us to determine the type of activity for, so for this one here, we will notice that this is a pattern of an oil palm plantation. So this makes us, uh, this makes it easy to determine the activity that's occurring in this particular area. So this also, this information does not only help uh, the forestry sector, but this can also help our, uh, the other sectors like agriculture and our lands uh, the other departments as well. So using this tool, we're able to, uh, to update the information that we have on forest and other land use. Okay, um, in terms of lessons learned, um, we, since you've seen the Collect Earth, we um, see that it is it has been beneficial for PNG, especially in updating the forest and land use information. Um, as I previously stated, uh, from the beginning, you can customize this and depending on your country's uh, specific um, circumstances. So, and also it has, um, it has built some understanding with the, uh, with the dynamics of changing of forests and other land use changes as well. Um, in terms of capacity building, um, since using this tool way back in 2013 and since the evolution or the uh, changing or the, uh, to the, the version of the open forest collect collected, we have also evolved and we appreciate that we were given the opportunity to be part of this uh, process as well. Um, also, as part of this, uh, 
we are able to have access to the latest satellite imagery. So we understand that having access to that is it costs money. So it's having a just a satellite image itself, we would not be able to able to have access to it. So we are grateful that uh, this was provided as part of the integration to the tool itself. Um, in terms of uh, future improvements, um, I did not mention anything on challenges, but I guess one of the challenges here is um, internet connectivity. So for you to have a good internet connection, then, then you can be able to use some of these tools because without internet connection, it, it becomes a bit difficult. So in PNG, and I guess in some other countries, you will notice that internet is, it costs a lot of money. It's not, uh, it's something that, uh, it's a, it would be an ongoing issue, but we hope that in future or something can be put in place where we can have access to these things. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, future improvements, um, I just put two here because uh, just the ability to develop and design these various tools for the different um, the tools that we are using, and mostly the documentation of the of how um, actually developing and designing this. So for us, we would like the capacity to be built, and then for us to be able to do it ourselves because at the end, uh, this is something that we would want to have it like a, on a sustainable basis. So from this, um, I guess we're very grateful that we were given the opportunity to use this. And I guess we will still continue to use this. And yeah, so thank you to FAO and everyone for making this possible. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing your presentation and your experience there on developing a national forest monitoring system. That was that was really interesting. Um, and now that's actually it for all our presentations. Um, we're going to now move on to the question and answer session. So don't hesitate to write your questions for our speakers, Laudi, Rocio, Thomas or Elizabeth um, in the question and answer box. And if you can write their name, before your question, that would really help us as well to identify uh, who should respond. That would be great. Um, and yeah, just another reminder to keep the questions in, in the Q&A box rather than the chat, but I think I think most of you are doing that anyway, so that's great. Um, so yeah, my first question um, is to Thomas. So Thomas, in 2019, Ghana signed an emissions reductions payment agreement, an ERPA, with the Forest Carbon uh, Partnership Facility. So how does uh, Ghana's national forest monitoring system um, and its work on the data transparency that you highlighted in your presentation contribute to this ERPA? Thank you very much, Emily, for the question. Um, so the ERPA has um, four monitoring periods. The first is 2019, the second is 2020, 2021, the third is 2022, 2023, and the fourth is 2024. Uh, so basically, we are supposed to generate our, um, or each report indicates the emission reductions that um, can be sold under the ERPA as you rightly pointed out. And um, it's through the National Forest Monitoring System that we're able to generate the emission reduction, so-called, and um, that um, is shared with the um, carbon fund under the ERPA. So through this process, Ghana has now been able to produce our first monitoring report for 2019, indicating the emission reductions, uh, the first emission reductions under the ERPA. So basically, um, that's the key thing to all of this, that the National Forest Monitoring System, the system that we put in place, gives guidance on how we can produce the, um, the emission reductions and subsequently use it in the report, the monitoring report that is submitted to the um, carbon fund. And that, that's the first thing. Um, it, it's been... Online 
we speak and um, all can check how some of these reports uh, have been generated and how to clarify. But I must add that in the, in the grant base and all of these have been combined to produce the monitoring report under the ARPA. So that's the key thing that uh, the NFMS has done through using all the institutional arrangements and all that under the NFMS to help us produce our very first report under the ERP, which is yet to be verified, I must add. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot there, Thomas. Um, my next question then is to Lauri. Lauri, in your opinion, what are the top three benefits of using um, tools like Open Forest? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Emily. So <clears throat> first, uh, Open Forest, it op offers uh, freely available tools for all phases of forest monitoring. And uh, there are tools from the field uh, data collection to the efficient management and processing of data. And then you want to use remote sensor, sensing data, there are efficient tools for assessment and monitoring. So <clears throat> that was a quite uh, already three answers, but I, I continue. So secondly, open forests are easily accessible, well-maintained and constantly further developed. And thirdly, you ask about the scale. Uh, so whether it is a local, sub-national or, nation, or national level, that is not an issue uh, because these applications uh, are suitable for land and forest monitoring at all scales. Thanks, Emily. Thanks a lot, Larry. And I see you've been active as well in the question and answer box to all the questions that are in there for you as well. So thanks for that. Um, my next question then would be to Elizabeth. So um, I think Papua New Guinea is quite famous for the very high biodiversity that it has and also the very large number of islands, which are wonderful. But I think those are also things that might pose challenges. They might pose prove challenging to, to forest monitoring, how to monitor all the different tree species that are there and how to monitor across all the different hundreds of different islands that the country has. So the question then is how then, Elizabeth, were the open forest tools adapted to PNG's unique context in order to, to respond to these challenges? Uh, thank you, Emily, for the question. Uh, yes, like other countries, I mean, biodiversity would be a challenge for any country. So with the open uh, forest uh, tool, we were able to um, capture the, um, have a list of the uh, species, the plant species. So in PNG, we have roughly about 20,000 plant species. So with this list, we were able to upload it into the uh, collect uh, mobile. So this was uh, used in the, um, when we were conducting our inventory surveys. So this is for, this list was useful in terms of the um, getting it from species to a genera to species or even just the species level or general level. So I guess this tool has been um, very useful. Um, yes, so, um, Yes, it also helps with the, um, since it's a, it's a huge uh, list that not everyone can memorize. So with this list, we are able to check and confirm that the spelling and all that of those particular species is the correct one. So, and also we are able to um, make comments if we find out that there is a new species or there's something that we need to highlight, we can also capture that information as well. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Elizabeth. Hey, another question to, to Lowry, which um, maybe is also related to some of the questions in the chat, is what would you say, Lowry, to somebody that is concerned that they don't have the computing skills, the skills to use, for example, our studio? Uh, what would you say to somebody who is worried about that when using Open Forest? Yeah, some, some of the Open Forest tools do not require computing skills at all, uh, but uh, some of them really do. So for example, data, uh, forest inventory data processing is always requires some sort of expertise so that there needs to be some uh, local expert who is tailoring the calculation chain. 
for the particular inventory case, for example. But the rest of the users, they don't have to uh, do this, this part. They simply use, they click the button and they use the application. Uh, so uh, in order to facilitate these learning processes, uh, we have prepared a uh, user manual that is available under Arena Tools website in openforest.org. And we are currently preparing video tutorials and also we have an active open forest support forum in internet so that uh, there you can ask the questions and uh, uh, the experts we or other experts around the world will answer to your questions thanks over to you Amy. thanks a lot lauri um i'm just looking in the chat and if if you'd like to i can ask you a question and you can respond vocally. I see that you're typing in there as well, which is great. But I see two questions that are asking uh, about the differences between Arena and Collect Earth Mobile. Do you want to respond? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, there are Collect Mobile and Collect Earth. They are different tools. So, but the difference between Arena and Collect Earth is that Arena is not handling uh, remote sensing data. Uh, as uh, Collect Earth is doing, which is using a sampling point, uh, a sampling approach using remote sensing data. But if the question is about Collect Mobile, then we, I must tell that uh, uh, we are implementing in next two weeks uh, so that uh, we can import Collect Mobile data into Arena. So, and we can use Collect uh, Open Forest Collect data already now in Arena. Over to you. Great, thank you. I'll, I'll leave you to respond as well to the questions I see that you're responding to in the chat. And I will ask a question to Rocio. Um, Rocio, you, back at the start of the um, of this webinar, you were telling us about the, your project, CBIT Forest. And a question would be, what is coming next? What is the plans for the next months for the project? Thank you very much, Emily, for the for the question. And I think uh, I can highlight two main things. I would say three, maybe. Um, upcoming, the third edition of the massive open online course, open to all interest to learn more how forest, in particular how national forest monitoring systems contribute to the climate action. It's starting on the 20th of September and lasts for three weeks. Uh, I encourage the participants to check our web page uh, and register uh, by the end of the month. We will have everything ready. Uh, of course, uh, I mentioned already during my presentation, uh, by the end of the year, we'll also have the Russian and the Arabic version of the e-learning course, and we will be launching those also through webinars, ad hoc webinars also in Russian and Arabic. Uh, and finally, I think uh, from the series of webinars we had, uh, we will have a final one in 2021 uh, on the 17th of November, where an online national forest inventory models will be launched uh, and available to all. So don't miss it and, and follow us. Thank you, Emily. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Rocio. Great. Um, I'm looking in the Q&A box and I see that we've gotten through about two thirds of the of the questions in there. So since we're almost near the end of the almost near the end of the um, time allocated for the webinar, because we also have our closing remarks, I think I will I will move on and close the Q&A session here if that's OK. Um, so thank you to all of our presenters today, Elizabeth, Thomas, Lauri, and also to Rocio and Fabio for the introductory remarks. And thanks especially to all of you, all 223 of you I see um, who have participated today. Um, and thanks for all your engagement in the question and answer box. We will respond to all questions in a follow-up, the ones that are remaining, and we'll share the entire uh, transcript of the Q&A box um, with you all so that you can refer to those. Um, and we will also be sharing, of course, the, the recording as soon as we can on the eLearning Academy website, which I think the link has, yeah, it's been shared in the chat. So with that, I would like to hand over to Julian Fox for some concluding remarks. Julian is team leader of National Forest Monitoring in the Forestry Division of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Thank you, Julian, for being here with us today. Over to you. 
Thanks so much, Emily. I mean, FAO is really honored to accompany countries and forest stakeholders on their journey toward more transparent forest data. It's essential for the Paris Agreement through capacity development and also through the provision of open source tools and platforms. FAO's Open Forest is 10 years old and these tools and platforms are really mature and have been used by over 30,000 people in just about all the countries of the world, which we're really, really proud of. However, we continue to innovate and improve them. And it is great to launch ARENA today with support from UNRED. Open Forest ARENA eases, eases the management of field data as it provides users with the ability to fully customize the inventory structure, variables and data checks. And the platform combines the main features of two open forest tools into a platform, open forest collect, open forest calc into the arena platform. I mean, national forest inventory data is fundamental ground measurement and is really expensive to collect. Hence, having accessible solutions such as arena is key to enable countries and stakeholders to store, analyze and report their forest data. And it's great to have two Red Plus pioneers with us today, uh, PNG and Ghana, and huge thanks to Thomas and Elizabeth for the great presentations. PNG institutionalized the national forest monitoring system based on open forest tools and platforms, which we're really proud of, and has also conducted a national forest inventory as described by Elizabeth. Ghana is in the process of finalizing its NFMS to support data provision for national needs, as well as national and subnational reporting to the UNFCCC and the World Bank's Carbon Fund, as described by Thomas. I mean, the national forest monitoring systems of PNG and Ghana are excellent examples of multi-purpose systems supporting both data provision for reporting and supporting national needs for decision-making and land management, and has helped both countries drive down deforestation and forest degradation. BNG reported 9 million tonnes of CO2 emission reductions to the UNFCCC, and Ghana is currently assessing emission reductions um, for the World Bank's Carbon Fund, thanks to the National Forest Monitoring Systems. I'd very like, briefly like to highlight four elements of these NFMS, which I think other countries can learn from. They provide transparent, reliable and credible data. Uh, that key data provision function for international reporting for MRV, other reporting needs and now transition into the enhanced transparency framework of the Paris Agreement. They did this by developing protocols, methodologies and tools to standardize and ensure the quality, comparability and compatibility of the information produced. They make data accessible to both national and international stakeholders through national web portals. This is essential, particularly for national stakeholders, as well as the international community who follow the country's progress. The development of both NFMS has been highly participatory, inclusive, inclusive a range of, of stakeholders, and also producing relevant data for multiple needs, having key functions to provide data for forest and land management with that sort of cross-sectoral integration, which is key. Another key feature that I noted is that the roles and responsibilities for the NFMS have been established and institutionalized, which ensures sustainability. Uh, this is really important, although there are always um, challenges with, with continuity of funding when, when systems are institutionalized in official government structures, I think they have a much better chance of being sustainable. So in summary, as I said, we're really honored to have supported PNG in Ghana and Ghana uh, and other countries on continuous improvement of their NFMS. And we're really pleased to share these examples and case studies with you all today. We hope this can trigger further south-south and triangular cooperation and knowledge exchanges between PNG, Ghana, and many other countries. I mean, my closing comment is that uh, we believe that higher levels of transparency create mutual trust in national and global climate and forest positive actions, and they facilitate higher levels of ambition. I mean, our, our shared vision is that transparent, reliable, relevant, accessible, and sustainable national forest monitoring systems can really support climate action on the ground, as we've seen here today in Ghana and PNG, and continuous improvement of forest data collection and management can support higher levels of country ownership, which leads to higher levels of ambition, which is so desperately needed at this critical moment for, for mankind and womankind, humankind. Thank you very much for your valuable time. Have a fantastic day. I think at the moment I pass over to Fabio to close this great webinar. Thank you, everybody. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Julian. And also thank you, Emily, for your moderation.
Thank you to all the speakers uh, of today for the presentations. Uh, as some of you asked, uh, and as well, I wrote already in the chat box, uh, the recording of today's webinar and the Q&A, the presentation, everything uh, will be made available at the link that I have already shared. Uh, you will also receive an email. Uh, all attendees will receive an email with all this information, so it will be with you also in your mailbox. Um, in the previous screen, we also shared a list of all the related courses that are available free of charge through the FAO eLearning Academy. So again, I just invite you all to have a look at the course offering. All the links have been pasted also here in the chat box, but uh, they will be copied in the web page where we'll all the learning material. So everything will be with you. Uh, I just take this opportunity uh, to thank again all the presenters, uh, moderator, our partners, UNS, Kappa Greenium, uh, Future Food Institute, and uh, of course, all of you, uh, our participants. Uh, thank you all very much for attending this session. And we look forward uh, to having you again in our next webinars. Thanks again. Have a good continuation of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi. Thanks, everybody. Bye.